Hey everyone, welcome to Yoga with Maria. I'm Maria and today we're practicing postpartum core yoga. This was a request from my friend Annie Rose who lives in Seattle, so thank you for making that request. And thanks to everyone else who showed interest for this video on Instagram. Even if you haven't had a baby, if you're looking for that deep core work, this one's definitely for you as well. We need one block for this practice. Grab your mat, make sure you're subscribed to this channel, and let's get started. All right, core club, find your space, whether it's on your mat or just a space that you've created on the floor. Take your block or something similar and place it between your ankles behind you. Bring the knees in front and sit down. We just want something solid that we can sit the, the, um, the seat on. Um, just take the hands to the lap to start. Let the eyes close. Let yourself have a moment or two to just settle in and take a moment just to be grateful for your body, to commit to doing your best. And one more moment here to just notice your breath. Just taking stock of how we're showing up today. So nice, you guys. And then when you're ready, flutter the eyes open. The first thing that we're going to get familiar with is in yoga, what we call mula bandha. So mula means root and bandha means lock. So we're talking about this root lock. Many of us that are watching this, specifically women, might be familiar with the sensation or the, a similar activation to mula bandha if and when you've practiced a kegel. And so the best way that I can, I'm going to describe this in like a few different ways. So one way to describe it is to think about the engagement of the sex organs or the genitals moving towards one another and then up. For women, you can think about and men, you can think about a lift of the pelvic floor. And I've definitely heard some male yoga teachers, if you're a man, I've heard, and this, this applies for women as well, describe or teach Mula Bandha as an engagement or tightening of the sphincter muscle. So this is definitely a subtle movement and engagement in the body. And so do your best Hopefully you can take something from one of those explanations and kind of apply it to, to yourself and see if you can feel this. So the first thing you want to do is just feel the seat pressing down into the block or a book or whatever you're kind of pressing the seat down into. Having something at the base of our uh, seat or pelvic floor is a nice way to like know if we're activating or not. It's sometimes easier to feel when you're pressing down that you can lift up off of. And then the hands will come to rest on the lap. And now some people can activate this easier after an inhale and some people can activate this easier after an exhale. So we're going to test out both. So just begin to tune into your breath again. Just notice your inhale and your exhale. Just normal, no special way in breathing, just normal, easy breaths. And then on your next inhale, breathe in. And then see if you can activate your Mula Bandha or your Kegel, pulling the pelvic floor up, pulling the genitals towards one another and up, and then release and exhale. And then breathe in again. See if you can activate at the top. And then release and exhale. We'll try this one more time. Breathe in. See if you can activate and then release and exhale. And then we're gonna try it after the exhale as well, just to see which way you feel like you can activate a little bit easier or deeper. So just breathe in, just watch the breath and then you'll exhale. After the exhale now, activate. For me, I think it feels almost the same, release. And then breathe in again, exhale and then activate, release, and then breathe in. 
Breathe out and activate Mula Bandha or your Kegel and release. Yeah, you're kind of hold, like suspending the breath there while you're activating this Mula Bandha or Kegel. So one thing to notice is when you're activating that, you might get a sensation of this entire kind of lower part of your belly also kind of engaging or pulling in towards the midline. And so that's knowing how to do this kind of Kegel action or Mula Bandha is a little bit of the first step or you could think of it as the foundation of you're building a house. Having that activation is gonna help us build the foundation of the core as well. So if you didn't feel this at all, don't worry. We're gonna try to activate Mula Bandha in other postures to see if you can feel it um, in a different orientation. For many of us, it's nice to be inverted, so you've got the help of gravity pulling the pelvic floor up towards the chest. So from here, we're gonna come to hands and knees, and then you're gonna take your block or your book, and if you don't have one, don't worry, you could do all these things without the block, but if you have one, stick it between the thighs, and then take the hands to the mat, and stack the shoulders over the wrist. The hips are gonna come over the knees. And before we do anything, just find a neutral spine, take the gaze a little bit forward, and then just squeeze the inner thighs into the block. And notice how that supports you in this position. Good, and then on the breath in, let the belly drop down. The block will move a little bit back behind you and the chest will reach forward. The chin can reach up with the sternum. On your exhale, press into the hands and the tops of the feet, begin to round the spine. And then as you get towards the top, think about the belly button coming in towards the spine. See if you can activate the muscles again in the core. Yeah, and then release this, let the belly drop down, chest reaches forward, look forward and up. On your breath in, press into the hands, round the spine, squeeze into the block, belly button to spine, soften the face, soften the back of the neck. Release and let the belly drop down, breathe in, chest reaches up, look up, nice little stretch. And then one more time on the exhale, press into the hands, tops of the feet, belly button comes towards the spine. Another way just to activate this core part of the body. It's a little exaggerated here, but it just starts to warm that area up and then release and come back to neutral. So nice, and then take the hands, one hand print. Further, you'll tuck the toes back behind you, and then you'll lift the knees slowly again, see if you can engage the core, and you'll lift the hips up and back, take the hands a little bit more forward, find your downward facing dog. We'll keep the block here just for a moment longer. You can do little pedals of the feet, bending one knee and then the other, just to warm up the backs of the legs. And then same thing here, see if you can observe a couple of breaths and maybe activate your Mula Bandha or Kegel in this downward facing dog. And then you can test out, you can breathe in, see if you can activate at the top of the inhale and then you'll release it in exhale. And then try one breathing in and we'll activate at the end of the exhale. So exhale and then activate and see if it helps to be a little bit inverted here. You've already got a little bit of gravity yeah, pulling the pelvic floor, again, like upwards towards the chest or in the direction that we want to move it. Cool, and then take the knees down and you'll just take the block and put it at the front edge of the mat. And then take the hips back up. Good, from here you're gonna lift the right leg up and back, any amount here. And then exhale, take the foot and step it between the hands. From here, the back heel is gonna spin down. So from, don't do anything yet. From here, we're gonna come all the way up to warrior two. But we're gonna do so paying a lot of attention. So before you go anywhere, start paying attention to the core part of your body. Press down into the outer edge of the back foot. And then on your next inhale, you're gonna slowly lift up, the arms are gonna cartwheel up and over and land yourself in a warrior two. Yeah, so just, if you're paying really close attention, just that can be a really nice activation of the oblique muscles. And then from here on your exhale, you're gonna take your right forearm to the top of the right thigh. And then this back arm's gonna come forward first and then up and over the ear. See if you can take a look at the hand and turn your pinky finger down so you're externally rotating 
the left uh, upper arm bone. Good. And then while we're here, we're going to reach the left fingertips even further. So you're going to kind of find this like really um, exaggerated side bend. And then you're going to pull, you're going to activate the left side of your obliques and pull, it's almost like pulling the upper arm bone towards this hip bone. So see if you can, it's a little subtle movement. And then on the bre breath in, just release it and find a big stretch. And then your exhale, engage. Yeah, and then breathe in. Take this easy. If this is too much for you, you can just stay in this side angle position. So one more time, breathe in, reach a little bit further, then breathe out. Upper arm bone to hip. And then you'll stay here and just breathe. And then you might, you might, might, with a lot of control, you, might, you could tip or dip this right elbow inside the knee and then press the elbow with the knee. But just test that out maybe a little bit. We don't want to overload the low back here. So stay in a place that you feel really supported. Knit the front ribs together. Good. And then on your next inhale, you're going to stand all the way up. Right leg straightens, right arm reaches up. Reverse triangle. Look up. Find a big, nice stretch. And then cartwheel the hands back to the mat. And then just step back to downward facing dog. Right foot steps back. We're going to take the other side. Left leg lifts up. And then step the foot forward and then you'll spin your back heel down. See if you can find heel to heel alignment here. So there's a little bit of space between the hips. You're not like walking on a tightrope. Make sure those back toes are turned in a little bit so there's a softness in the right hip here. And then come back to your breath. Before you come up, pay attention. And then you'll start with the right arm and circle it up and over and then you start to engage the obliques as you lift the torso up, slow and easy. We're not here to pull anything, yeah? We're here in our warrior two and then you'll take the left forearm to the top of the left thigh. Take your right arm forward so it's like just right out in front of your face so you can see your fingertips and then you'll take it up and over at a diagonal. Pinky finger spins down. Good, keep pressing into the back foot, the outer edge of the back foot to be more clear. And then from here, you'll reach those right fingertips really far, like you're making a really big stretch in the right side of the body, and then pull, then you'll activate the right obliques, almost like you're pulling the right upper arm bone towards the hip, it's subtle. And let's be careful here, don't overdo it if this doesn't feel, this feels like too much for you, just stay here in this nice position, you're gonna get strengthening in the, the obliques and the side parts of the body. If you're coming with me, do it two more times. We'll reach and then engage and pull and activate the obliques one more time. Breathe in, breathe out. Make sure those front ribs are staying tucked in and towards the midline. Good, and then you'll just observe a few more breaths here. On your next inhale, stand all the way up. Straighten your left leg, left arm reaches up. Find a nice big stretch. Exhale, cartwheel the hands to the mat and step back to downward facing dog. So nice. We're gonna do one more thing on our feet here. Breathe in, right leg lifts. Breathe out, step the foot forward. Find your warrior two feet again. Your back heel spins down, find heel to heel. And pay attention, breathe in, lift yourself up to a warrior two. Breathe out, just stay here and settle in. Breathe in, straighten your right leg. On your breath out, you're gonna cut the hips back a little bit and reach forward. The right hand reaches forward and down for triangle pose. So if you have a block, you might place it outside the foot or you can place the right hand to the shin or the ankle. We definitely want support underneath this hand. And then the left arm just reaches straight up. Once again, engage this, the middle part of your core, the obliques will be working as well. The gaze can go up to the top fingertips. Triangle pose will uh, really work the whole body here, but see if you can activate Mula Bandha here as well. It's a little bit different with the legs apart, so think about energetically pulling the inner thighs towards one another even pulling your front heel back towards the back heel. It's like, it's called an isometric movement where you're not actually moving anything, but the muscles are uh, engaging in a certain direction. 
Good, and then on your breath in, stand all the way up again with care because you're using the core muscle to lift yourself up. If you touch right here, you'll notice you're really using the obliques to stand up. And then reach up again, find reverse triangle. Look up, big stretch. And then cartwheel the hands down to the mat and find downward facing dog. Let's take the other side, left leg lifts. Exhale, step it through and spin your back heel down, heel to heel alignment, turn your back toes in so that there's a, some softness in the front hip. It's an internal rotation of the back leg. We'll set up our block over here. And then lift yourself up, lead with the right arm, cartwheel the arms up for warrior two. On your exhale, just stay here. Maybe readjust the feet if you need. Again, back leg turns in, front leg turns out. Good, and then straighten your left leg. Breathe out, cut the hips back and reach the left hand down to the shin, ankle, or maybe a block outside the foot. Right arm reaches straight up to the ceiling. Before you do anything, engage the core and knit the front ribs together. Yeah, then the gaze can go up. We didn't do this on the other side, but you could play with taking this upper arm over the ear. You'll find a little bit of a stretch in the oblique and the intercostal muscles here might be easier to activate the oblique when the arm is straight up. And then take your attention to the legs, energetically pulling inner thighs towards one another. So there's this always this activation of pulling up and in. Easy, steady breath. And then engage the legs and the belly to lift yourself all the way up, slow and with control. And then you can tip it back, left arm reaches up, look up. Exhale, cartwheel the hands to the mat and take downward facing dog. From here, lift the heels and bend the knees and you just take tiny steps to the front of the mat. Yeah, when you get to the top, take a half lift and then take the hands to the um, hips. Use the thumbs to press the sacrum or the butt flesh down and lift yourself all the way to stand. And then you'll just bend your knees, catch your block if you have one again and place it between the legs or the thighs. Good. And then just stand up for a second here and press down into the feet. Squeeze the block with the inner legs. And then see if you can, whether you're, you actually do it or you're just doing it in your imagination, see if you can lift your inner arches. For me, sometimes I tend to like, if I'm gonna lift the inner arches, my toes tend to spread and lift up. So you might lift the toes to help you find that lift of the inner arch. And as you do this, just notice, you might notice that the whole inner edge or the inner seams of the body start to light up and engage. So the, inner, the arches of the feet, the inner edges of the legs, all the way up through the core. You can just stand here and squeeze the block and that can be a really nice way to start to activate everything. And if you notice it here, you might be able to find these little moments throughout your day where you can find this when you're standing. And really it's just, it starts with the arch of the foot. Good, and then release this a little bit. You'll still squeeze into the block and then you'll sit the hips low, arms reach up for a chair pose. Again, use the legs a little bit more here Front ribs knit in, use the belly, turn on the belly. Good, and then you'll stand up. Hands will come to touch in front of the sternum. And then from here, come up onto the balls of the feet if you can. Again, you've got, you almost have to use this like core region of the body to make this work. And then slowly begin to bend the knees. Keep breathing all the way to the bottom. And then you'll take one hand down and back behind you the other hand. Come to sit down, keep your block. We're gonna take boat pose or Navasana. So, a couple things here before we go into this. If you, if you know what your six pack muscles are, you know what that looks like, that sometimes that middle part of the abdomen will split because, you know, women, if you're a woman and you've carried a baby, the baby spreads everything out. So 
some of us have an actual tear, like some people will get an actual tear there. I will make a video about how you can find out if that's you. But if you know you already have that, turn on your ears now. Or if you just, this is the first time you're doing this video or you just feel like pretty unstable still in your core, you're gonna take your hands to the, kind of where your obliques are, the sides of your uh, torso, and you're just gonna literally hold yourself together. Or if it feels better to kind of cross the arms in front and take the hands to the sides of the body and like pull in this way, you can do this as well. So you might stay here on the toes. And then you might, if you have, if you can balance on the seat, you might lift the feet up. And then if you feel pretty good and you wanna extend the arms, you can do that as well. And then we'll just watch five cycles of breath here. So you're just breathing. Oh, that's two. Keep squeezing the block with the inner thighs so that you're also activating the deepest part of the abs, the transverse abdominals. That's what we kind of activate when we, when we engage Mula Bandha or a Kegel as well. Our foundation or our, of the house. And then on your next inhale, see if you can lower to low boat. Same thing, if you need to hold here, do that. And then release everything to the floor. So nice, and then remove your block. Such, such good work. And then you can take, keep the hands here again if you wanna hold yourself together. Otherwise the hands can press down by the sides and you'll just slowly lift your right leg up. Flex the foot and then you'll float the left leg as well. Take the hands behind the leg this will help too, if you're holding the sides of the body here, holding the leg will give you a little bit more support as well. And then you'll just lift the left leg up and take the hands behind the leg and lower the right. And then we'll switch. Move slowly, pay attention to your breath. Switch again. Just finding different ways to activate the core, activate our midline, with functional movement, using the breath. There's no need to overdo anything. This is a, a journey, taking little steps in the right direction. Good, let's take one more on each side. The right leg goes up, and then the left leg goes up. So nice, and then take both legs up, hug the knees into the chest just for a moment and then take the feet down to the mat, let the knees knock in on one another. You can just take the hands to this, the low belly, this area of the body. You might even think about sending some extra love to this area that has gone through so much. Show yourself some kindness. the different layers of the abs protect so much and so many of our vital organs, transverse abdominals protect the spine so much. The obliques literally hold us together and the, um, the rectus abdominals keep everything from like literally falling out our front. I mean, all of our vital organs are right here. And of course we have the rib cage and stuff, but these muscles are pretty key to us, you know, having any, like most movement originates from the core. So just having a little bit of gratitude for a well-designed body. Okay, and then heel toe the feet. We're gonna do one more thing here. So take the block back between the thighs. I'm gonna do one more thing just to see, just to do a little bit more isolation in uh, the transverse abdominals, which is again that the deepest layer of our abs. I keep referring to it as kind of like the foundation of the house. Um, it takes like a little bit of mental effort to activate them, and so, but and they can often be forgotten or like other bigger muscles uh, can take over, and so it's important to really get in touch with these to make sure we're, we're building all the layers appropriately. 
So feet are on the ground, they're just parallel and hip width distance or in line with the knees. And allow there to be a little bit of an arch in the low back here. So I'll, I'll um, pull my shirt up so you can see this really well. So there's a little bit of a nat just it's just the natural curve of the low back. Okay, so you can feel the the uh, sacrum on the mat, and then you'll feel your um, thoracic spine up here on the on the mat, and your lumbar curves up, and there's going to be a space. You could almost probably fit your hand, and then the arms come long by the sides, and then just find your breath again. Just notice one cycle of breath in and out, and then you'll breathe in again. On your exhale, engage your belly and think about like sucking the low back down onto the floor. So think about the belly button pressing down towards the spine and then feel your low back press against your mat or the floor. And then on your inhale, you can release. This is kind of a similar action to the cat cow. On the next exhale, same thing again, belly button comes towards the spine, press your low back to the mat. Breathe in, release. And then again, exhale, press. Think about belly button to spine, low back press. I mean, really the biggest thing that you're gonna feel is pressing the low back down onto your mat. It's really nice to have like, again, the wall to press against. Same thing with the, the Kegel or the Mulabanda. Same idea. And then release. Good. So it's important though, because we're, we're not usually kind of in the, like if you're standing up or you're in another position, we're not trying to straighten out our lumbar spine. We want like a nice supple curve or just our neutral, not neutral, but it is neutral, but our natural curve of the back. The, the back isn't naturally like in a straight line. We've got this like beautiful, these beautiful arches in the spine that help us balance and can absorb shock and like all these other incredible things. And when we don't, when we're not pushing down, when we're pushing down, we often use like the legs and other things to activate those muscles. So it's important to be able to isolate without all these other actions of like pushing the low back to the mat. So see if you can, you might even slide one hand underneath so that you know that you're not pressing the back, but we're gonna find the same engagement of the transverse abdominals or those low uh, inner abs again, without pressing the low back down. So just breathe in, breathe out, engage. Might take a few tries, so be gentle with yourself, be easy on yourself. And then release, take a breath in. Exhale, engage. There might be a little bit of squeezing in on the block, but try not to let the low back press down and then release and breathe in. So it's really this feeling of like, it's almost like the feeling you had with the hands when you, maybe when you were holding the sides of the body for a Navasana. It's really this feeling of like, if someone was giving you a hug or like, you had like a nice big belt or sometimes, uh, I know people, when they're pregnant, they wear like a pregnancy belt. It's like that feeling of like everything pulling in towards your spine or your midline. So let's try it one more time. Breathe in. Breathe out, engage. Yeah, it's, sometimes it's nice to take the hands to the belly and just like, you, when you can feel it with your hands, sometimes it's easier to activate and then release. And then we're gonna find this similar action and lift the hips up. So hands come long by the sides. You can pull the heels in a little bit so just the back, back edge of the heels touches the fingertips. And then you'll engage the legs on the block a bit here. And on your breath in, you'll press down into the feet and lift the hips up. So we're not looking for the back bend here. It's a little bit of a bridge variation. We're just looking to lift the hips a little bit and see if we can find the same action or engagement of the low belly with this different position. So you can still feel a little bit of a curve in the low back. You can even take your hand there and feel it. And then on the next exhale, you'll see if you can engage the transverse abdominals or the low belly. There's a little squeezing in of the block and then see, you might even activate Mulabanda or your Kegel here and engage the low belly, yeah. So release. 
And then we'll try it again, breathe in. On the exhale, engage the belly. You might take your hands to the belly here just to feel. Good, and then hands come down, release, and just lower the seat back down to the mat or the sacrum down to the mat, and then take the block to the side. So, such nice work, you guys. Heel to the feet wide and take the knees to touch. And then again, take the hands to the low belly. Just come back to your breath. Just notice the breath once again. And then we'll just take some windshield wiper, we call it, with the knees. So just let the knees drop to one side. And then the other, you can start small. And then begin to make these movements a little bit bigger here. So nice. And then bring the knees back to neutral. Knees can come to touch. And then you can stay here in this uh, constructive rest, or you can take the legs long and the arms by the sides for Shavasana. I'm going to sign off from here. So thank you so much for joining me. Namaste, yogis. If you're wanting to continue on with more core work, the perfect next building block for you will be my yoga for strength and core video right here on YouTube. I'll link to it here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can get all the new updates. Can't wait for you to check this one out. See you there.